everyone. Thanks for coming out to honor Brianna and Katie. Fantastic. Um, I love this documentary competition. Rachel from C-SPAN is going to fill us in more on that, and then we're going to watch this great documentary and get a little Q&A in, too. So thank you again for coming. Rachel. Okay. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Rachel. I work at C-SPAN in Washington, D.C., and I get to travel around um, in the spring and visit some of the student cam winners. And it's really fun, it's really exciting, and I'm thrilled to be here to um, recognize Brianna and Katie for their video on nat national parks. So um, before we watch the video and bring up people who are going to congratulate them, um, I wanted to talk just for a minute about C-SPAN. Has anyone here watched C-SPAN before, watched anything on C-SPAN, a speech hearing? Um, we cover the House, we cover the Senate. I see a lot of the elected officials raise their hands. That's good. Um, the House, the Senate, hearings, um, a lot of stuff that's going on in Washington and around the country. Um, we are gearing up, have geared up already for a big campaign season. Um, so C-SPAN is able to do all of that because of our partnership with Comcast. We'll hear from a minute in a minute from our friends at Comcast. But we have no commercials, no advertising, so that you're able to watch everything that's happening in Washington, D.C. You elect your representatives here. They come to Washington and make laws that are affecting you every day, and we think it's important that you're able to watch an unedited, unfiltered version of that so that you're able to think for yourself. And so thinking for yourself and making your own decisions is a big thing at C-SPAN, and so that's why we started almost 20 years ago the student camp competition, and this year we put students in a position of power asking them um, if you were a newly elected member of Congress, what would be your first priority and why? And we had over 1,500 entries from around the country. We only give out 150 prizes, and only three winners are from Michigan, and Troy has the highest level winner from the state of Michigan, so we have second prize here. So before we talk any more about them and their video, let's watch the video together, and then we'll bring up some people to congratulate you. I'm a big fan of the national parks. I've spent a lot of time in them recently, and as I've noticed, so have a lot of other people. I wondered if there is a line between popularity and preservation, and it turns out this is a tension that has existed since our national park system was first conceived by our founding director, Stephen Mather, on what has come to be known as the Mather's Mountain Party. He took a group of people into the parks, basically like the first like glamping trip ever. This is pretty like mass photography, right? So people didn't know what these places looked like. He basically, you know, asked them to go back and spread the word about these national parks. And then um, shortly thereafter, um, Congress passed the act, it was called the Organic Act, that created the National Park Service. In a way, they were too successful. And this gave rise to something called the Mather Paradox. And the whole idea behind the Mather Paradox is that the national parks should be managed for the enjoyment of the American people and at the same time, keep them preserved for the enjoyment for future generations. That has gotten much more difficult in recent years. Horseshoe Bend, for example, is a really popular uh, National Park Service area, and that went from about 4,000 visitors a year to then with the rise of Instagram and all these iconic photos emerging and circulating on people's feeds, over 2 million visitors a year. That's huge. How do you say something that is being loved to death? I have connected with national parks within my state to see if they're struggling to keep up with their popularity. Ten years ago, we were roughly about half a million visitors a year, 100,000, give or take, 100,000. Uh, and we're, last year, we counted 1.3 million. The infrastructure hasn't changed. Uh, our parking lots are the same. A lot of our roads are literally old logging roads that aren't built wide enough for current standards, and culminating in a you know a 50 car parking lot for, for Chapel Trailhead, for instance, that fills up first thing in the morning in the summer, and then it's it's just this uh, crazy mess down there the rest of the day. We're on a big pile of sand. Um, the, uh, the sandy, the soils here are, are it's all sand. Um, we're in a coastal dune area. So just people wouldn't think, I don't think people recognize that they really can do a lot of damage just by, by walking off trail. 
for protecting and preserving the things that have been deemed by the American people to be nationally significant, but doing it in such a way that allows people to enjoy it and learn about it, um, but in a way that doesn't damage it for future generations. Now, even at like Isle Royale National Park, one of the least visited national parks due to its remote location in Lake Superior, it's still not immune to the challenges of overcrowding. While we might be talking about 20,000 visitors as a big uh, year for us, but those 20,000 visitors in the backcountry uh, certainly have, can have an impact on people's uh, experiences in a wilderness park. So that's really kind of the angle that we're looking at. Although the problems we see at each of the national parks can sometimes be quite similar, there is no magic solution to address overcrowding. It's, a, it's a, almost a daily struggle. We try to figure out how we can maintain access where it still looks and feels wild. And when we start fencing things off like that, you know, it's, it's just not the same. But we, we come up with these compromises and try to you know, basically do the best we can. How do you strike that balance between preservation mm -hmm. and use? Um, that's certainly something that every, every park has to face in, in some, some way or another. We're trying to to be a welcoming place for all. So we have to acknowledge that there's gotta be those parking lots, there's gotta be those that infrastructure that allows everyone to enjoy the park. I mean, it's just so critical for people to kind of understand the environment that they're coming to, you know, know what, they're, what they can do and see. That's the challenge of the parks. You know, they're, they're here to be enjoyed for current and future generations. That's the National Park Service Organic Act says, we're gonna preserve the wildlife and the uh, therein and the objects therein, and, but we have to make it so that it's enjoyable for current and future generations. For the first time in a long time, this issue was addressed in 2020 with the Great American Outdoors Act. For more than 50 years, Congress has struggled to adequately fund land and water conservation, leading to a never-ending backlog of maintenance and other critical needs in our parks and public lands. And the bipartisan 2020 Great American Outdoors Act funded a $9.5 billion maintenance backlog. And while that is a great start, it does not fully fund all necessary repairs. As a member of Congress, I would prioritize our national park system. Visitor numbers clearly show they're working well, and I'm not sure why we would constantly underfund one of our strengths. I don't want maintenance backlogs. I want individual park units to be the proactive and innovative with their resources, not constantly trying to keep up. The Great American Outdoors Act was a great start, but it needs to be amended to meet the current park needs. this video we get um, like I said we got over 1500 videos and um, the environment in general is one of the top uh, topics that comes in but not specifically related to the National Park so this one really stood out as something different it's taking care of the environment and it's getting people out into nature I think it's really interesting I did not know um, about the history of it of getting people that sending people out and getting photos and then the one woman who testified talking about how they went from such a small number to now everyone wants to put pictures on Instagram, how they're getting more and more people visiting the park. So trying to keep those safe for everyone. So before we congratulate you and present you with your awards from C-SPAN, I want to call up a few people. I'm going to start with, you have a, actually I think three members of your school board here who are here, and speaking on behalf of them is going to be Nicole Wilson. Encouraging that is, is so, we're just really grateful for that. So, and I just want to encourage and um, congratulate you ladies. I, as a board member,
November, we get to celebrate some of the creative projects that happen in the district. And we're so excited when we see uh, Mr. Burns' students come because they do so many amazing projects. And I know I've seen both of your names multiple times over the last couple of years. And so we just want to congratulate you on winning this award and thank you for making the school district proud. You represent us well, even though it's all you. And so we just want to um, acknowledge your hard work and say thank you for living this your passion and, and dedicating your time and energy. And we want to say thank you to Mr. Burns for finding all of these opportunities for students to get to explore their passions and um, bring attention to important things like Mount St. Mary's. So congratulations. Because Brianna and Katie won second prize, it means that their video aired on C-SPAN, so it aired um, on national television. Um, it lives in two places on our website, actually, because of that. You each have your, your, your video has its own page on studentcam.org, where um, it's your winning video, plus any of the congratulatory messages that we received, either letters from elected officials or video messages people put in. But it also exists in C-SPAN's video library, which is an archive of over um, 200,000 hours of video from 1987 forward. And if you search your video and your names, it will also show up in there. So you're forever archived in C-SPAN's um, C video archive there, which is uh, really exciting. Um, one of the people who did put um, send us a congratulatory video that is included on your webpage, which could be used hopefully when you are um, applying to jobs or colleges, you link to that website because it shows all the great things you've done, um, is your mayor. And he is also here in person. So we're going to welcome up Mayor Ethan Baker to congratulate you on behalf of the city. talk to them, not to you, but I will talk to all of you. So I am the mayor of the city of Troy, and listen, I love when Troy succeeds, obviously. I mean, so my favorite thing was hearing that we were the best of the student winners in the state of Michigan. We were number one. That doesn't surprise me. Um, obviously, Brandon and Katie, you, um, the video is very powerful, and I'll tell you a couple things I really love about it right off the bat. You know, we're in a very polarized time, right? You pick something that is can be bipartisan. Everyone can get behind it, and I think that's a really cool way to influence a bigger group of people. And I don't know, I mean, I'm not going to ask C-SPAN, you're all about nonpartisan or bipartisan too, but I'm sure a lot of submissions probably took a more political tack, and you guys picked something that was really, really something we can all get behind. And I can speak to that. Um, you know, my dad lives just outside of Yosemite, and he talks about some of these things like on a, just a conversational level that you're showing in the video, the amount of traffic and everything. But you, even in Troy, you know our parks, people want us to invest more resources in parks. So it's like a huge issue, and I love that you took it to such a big scale and showed all the different options, and there's some really interesting things in there. So, you know, the entire city gets behind you, and we celebrate you, and um, I'm really honored to get to come here today and to say thank you for doing this and for help putting Troy out there, Troy out there in a, a wonderful way, of course, Athens, and all the support you have here. But um, really, it's... Like I said, there's a lot of negative stuff out there. It's great to see something so positive and to just really advocate for something that clearly means something to you and that I think a lot of people can get behind. So on behalf of the Troy City Council, city administration, all, the whole city, we celebrate you, we congratulate you. I'm really glad I got to be here today and meet you in person. And uh, I'll keep sharing the good news and showing your video to people as much as they'll watch it. So congratulations to the two of you. And C-SPAN, thank you again, like Nicole said, to have you do this and to be part of it. I would love it if you bring the bus back. The C-SPAN bus is so cool. If you've been on the bus, you'll have to find it. But um, honestly, on behalf of the city, congratulations and good, good work. Um, so we also have someone, uh, Michael Tash. He's from your Congresswoman um, Haley Stevens office. Haley Stevens, I believe, they're in session this week. So it's in Washington, D.C. So she was not able to attend. But um, Michael Tash works in her local office and is here to congratulate you on behalf of your congresswoman. Hi, so my name is Michael. I'm from U.S. Congresswoman Haley Stevens' office. I just want to congratulate you immensely. 
one day. I hope to work for both of you. Uh, but likewise, with national parks, it's one of my personal passions. Uh, you had Isle Royale in there. Isle Royale is the least visited, but most revisited national park. And when I went to Glacier, immense overcrowding and walls falling off the cliffs. So this is such an important topic. Uh, we have certificates from the congresswoman to acknowledge this you know, big accomplishment. Again, keep making us proud, and thank you so much. Um, Rich Macheski is going to come up to congratulate you. I like when the superintendent comes because I know that they oversee, I like when everybody comes, but I like when the superintendent makes time to attend because I know that you oversee a lot of schools in the district. There's always something going on, and so to make the time to come here to congratulate them is, is really important. So thank you. Thank you so much as well to, to C-SPAN for taking the time out of your day to congratulate the work uh, of these young ladies. It is, uh, we have two other members of our Board of Education here. I just want to represent or, or recognize one of our trustees, uh, Mrs. Vitalani, as well as our, our president, uh, Carl Schmidt. Thank you for being here. You too, taking time out of your day along with uh, Dr. Wilson to celebrate our students because that's what we're all about in the Troy School District. We want to celebrate excellence. Uh, these young ladies represent excellence. Uh, what also strikes me is uh, our Part of our strategic plan in our, in our school district, and it lives in what we call the blue pillar, is about our students connecting their learning to their world. And that's what it, it really is all about. It's about you taking time to think about what you're passionate about, what, what interests you, and seeking learning around that. So this is an excellent demonstration of our students connecting their learning to their world because at the end of the day, just like natural parks are there in perpetuity for those that will follow, uh, the, the students in the Troy School District will follow in your footsteps in the work that your, your, uh, your fellow classmates do in terms of helping to change their community, because that's exactly what our students are doing. They're changing the community around them. It may be something as simple as a park within your own school district or parks in our state or parks across the United States. Uh, but we're thankful for the work that you do I uh, hope that you will enjoy uh, the monetary success of this video, but no, also recognize that uh, these are juniors. So next year, we're going to expect bigger and even better from the two of you. And I know you'll deliver, but on behalf of the Board of Education and the school district, we couldn't be more proud of you. Congratulations. I want to just let you share with everybody, you know, sort of some of the behind the scenes stuff with your video. So you can tell that this was an issue that was um, really you guys were passionate about and something that's important to you. So can you talk for a little bit to everybody about how you developed such a love for the national parks and was that the first thing that came to mind when you heard the topic or did you talk about some other things to potentially do? So me and my family have been traveling to the national parks for years, and a few years ago we went to um, out west, and we went to national parks like Yellowstone and Grand Tetons, and we absolutely loved it. And this year we're going to Montana, so I'm super excited for that, to see Glacier. And, um, but so basically when we went, we noticed that it was really crowded, like we had trouble finding parking, and um, we had to wait in a lot of lines to get into the national parks. And so when we heard the C-SPAN prompt, we were really excited because we thought it would fit perfectly.
Um, but there were so many people. Um, and so what do you think that they should do to balance letting people come and visit with probably the harm that all the cars cause in general, but how to get people there? Um, so yeah, basically we heard a lot of different things from the parks, like parking was an issue. And so we kind of think that it was best just to fund them so that they can take the money that we give to each park and they can do their own thing with it so that it's not just like one certain thing that they're like, they have to do with it. from Comcast. I mentioned before um, that the way that, that C-SPAN is funded is through our cable partner. So locally here, we work with Comcast. And he's going to congratulate you, and then we are going to actually present you with your big award. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Eric Woody with Comcast. We do government relations. I feel like everyone's already said uh, everything that I wanted to say uh, today. So, but um, again, congratulations. It is truly inspirational for um, young people like yourself to accomplish something like this. I wish I was as motivated as, as this when I was in high school, so definitely put me to shame from back in the day, but um, you know, Comcast is, uh, just wanted to send their congratulations and um, congratulate you for uh, C-SPAN student camp winners. So I'll keep it short and sweet because I know we're kind of winning second prize and having their video air on C-SPAN, they also won um, $1,500. And um, I want to thank Mr. Burns. Um, they also, by winning and putting Mr. Burns down as their advisor, um, he also won a little bit of money for to get some stuff for the classroom. Um, and I want to congratulate your parents for doing such a great job. They um, you guys are re really active. It, you, your passion shows, um, obviously your technical ability that you're learning um, to put together videos is great, but also um, your interest in this, you have sparked some passion. I had a great time at the um, national parks and you know, taking my children maybe on trips like your parents have taken you some really exciting also and giving them that opportunity. So on behalf of myself and everyone at C-SPAN and together with Eric at, at Comcast, we just want to say congratulations on winning $1,500. And um, we're going to have up anyone who came up and spoke or is with the school board, we're going to want to take a few photos with you. And everybody else who is a student with class, I don't know, I guess go back. I don't know, Mr. Burns, yes, he is, he, is, he is whisking you away. So thank you so much for attending today. Parents, also please stay around. We appreciate you being able to recognize your fellow classmates.